as we saw with media representations of race and ethnicity, one of the most common ways of representing women in media and constructing femininity within media texts is to not include it. So once again, in relation to women, as we saw with race, we have this idea of exclusion or symbolic annihilation. Women are just excluded from discussion in media texts. And this particularly happens in relation to the news media. So this is a report from the Women's Leader Leadership Institute 2016, and it looks at women as sources in news stories. So the number of women who are quoted um, used as use it as sources in news stories, and also the number of women or the proportion of women who write opinion articles, um, who are considered and positioned as experts in a particular topic, a particular area, as an opinion leader, and their their work is given prominence within newspapers. And we're talking here newspapers, both the old printed version and online as well. And as this infographic very gra very graphically demonstrates, um, women are the absolute minority when it comes to being used as sources for news stories. So 79% of all sources across Australian newspapers are men. Only 21% of all sources used in quoted in newspapers are women. So there's a massive disparity, a massive disparity between um, men and women in terms of in terms of their appearance within the news media as sources. Now, this graph shows the most frequently published categories of opinion editorials by gender. So editorials, opinion pieces on a range of topics, which we can see down the left hand side, everything from arts and entertainment all the way through to education, finance, foreign affairs, politics, social issues. And once again, we can see that overall, apart from that one category, arts and entertainment, men dominate as the writers of opinion editorials. And it's fair to say, I think, that the one area in which female women writers dominate is an area which traditionally can be gendered feminine or certainly as soft news. Now, in relation to business and education, we're beginning to see some parity to a lesser extent in that sort of broad category, social, social issues, some parity, but in the hard news, news which potentially could be gendered once again as masculine, and I'm talking here about um, finance, foreign affairs and politics, the opinion writers, the opinion leaders are overwhelmingly men, overwhelmingly men to the, you know, in the case of finance, almost almost 90, more than 90 percent, coming close to 100 percent um, there. In relation to the overall gender split in, um, in terms of opinion articles, we can see the major um, Australian daily newspapers. The Courier Mail here is, is not present. They're really only the Sydney and Melbourne dailies and the two national daily newspapers, the Financial Re Review and the Australian. But we can see in these, in these newspapers the gender breakdown, the overall gender breakdown in terms of who writes opinion articles is very, very clearly skewed in favour of men. So what we're seeing here as an example is exclusion or symbolic annihilation of women's perspectives, women's voices, 
within the news media. And one of the important critiques that feminists have made is the idea that in order for women to achieve more power in society, in order to achieve equality in terms of in terms of power and across you know the full range of of areas then women's voices need to be heard and here we see very clearly that even in 2016 women are not being heard in relation to important issues as they are discussed within within the Australian news media